Hello, I'm Sophia Anderson, and welcome to my lightning talk on my ongoing research into Goniacodon and its place in the history of mammals. The end Cretaceous extinction event 66 million years ago devastated life on Earth, resulting in dramatic reductions in diversity and the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. As the world recovered, mammals began to thrive, increasing in taxonomic diversity, body size, and ecological specialization throughout the Paleocene. The mammals which roamed the lush North American forests at this time would have seemed simultaneously familiar and alien, from what we know so far anyway. Most of the Paleocene mammals of North America are known only from teeth and fragmentary fossils, meaning the phylogeny of these animals and the specifics of how they moved and lived remain largely unknown. One particularly enigmatic family is the Triisodontidae, small to medium-sized mammals possibly related to the ancestors of modern ungulates and cetaceans. They appear to have been experimenting with carnivory. Though they lack the carnasial teeth of modern carnivores, their teeth have clear shearing edges. Beyond this, we know little about the Trisodontids because the rest of their skeletons, the postcrania, is barely known and almost completely undescribed. This project aims to shed light on this group by describing the postcrania of Goniacodon, the most completely represented Trisodontid to date, from previously undescribed and historic specimens like these found in the Nascimento formation of the San Juan Basin, New Mexico. The animal that appears out of these bones is about the size of a red fox, but far more robust, with strong shoulders. Some of the most well-defined muscle attachment sites on the limbs are for muscles involved in flexing and extending the digits. The elbow joint also indicates that Goniacodon was capable of pronation and supination, that is, rotating the wrists. These are all indicators of a powerful animal, which was likely capable of climbing trees, but certainly was capable of moving on varied terrain. Not agile by modern standards, but agile for its time. Perhaps the best comparison is that Goniacodon was like a raccoon with the sturdiness of a badger. Current work is focusing on bite forces in these Paleocene mammals, and it appears that they had higher bite forces than modern animals of their size. Goniacodon may have had a bite force up to 639 newtons, which is 1.5 times as high as the African hunting dog, which is approximately the same body mass as Goniacodon. It seems that the enigmatic Paleocene mammals, here exemplified by Goniacodon and the Trisodontids, were diverse, and perhaps unlike anything living today. Goniacodon was strong, but potentially nimble and able to exploit a wide range of terrains in search of prey. The current work on bite force suggests that said prey stood little chance against the powerful jaws of the Paleocene carnivores. Studying Goniacodon provides us with just one example of the forms mammals surely took during this time, a testament to the adaptability of mammals to thrive in ever-changing environments. Thanks so much for watching, and please feel free to find me on social media.